This is uh, Morten from Inkis. We are here at Komori Open House in Utrecht in uh, the Netherlands. And I just met my good friend Pat. Good to see you again. Good How are you? you? I am so good. Um, Pat, um, if I say that uh, AMS is, let's say, very innovative and maybe even, maybe you can even kind of take credit for being one of the best suppliers of LED lamps, LED UV lamps. Would that be uh, fair to say or? No, absolutely. As I'm sure you know, we were one of the pioneers actually of LED, especially in the larger format, especially for big high-speed applications like sheet fed and high-speed web. There are lots of players in it, but a lot of them are actually just focused on the low speed things where power is not really an issue, cooling is not really an issue. But when it comes to real challenging applications, that's where we've focused and that's where we've ex excelled. Um, you mentioned yourself that, that uh, the competition field is, has grown over the years, right? If you are, let's say, a printer and you want to let's go into the replacement market, right? Isn't it almost impossible to differentiate when you just see it? Or I mean, I guess you have to talk to people before you really understand the differentiation in the, in the different offerings. Um, there's a lot of different offerings, and we have price-based ones and, and performance-based ones and stuff like this. At the end of the day, we feel that performance is the one that really. No, I, I think I, I phrased myself uh, wrongly because I was just thinking that if you if you say that that we are here, for example, just in this hall here, there's like two three uh, uh, companies delivering different uh, UV solutions, and I was just wondering if I was a printer or uh, having a machine that I want to retrofit with UV, yes. how do I find the right supplier for my solution? Okay, well, in. In the industry, and it's gone back several years, some of the UV suppliers, conventional UV and LED suppliers, have become more and more aligned to different OEMs. And you don't have to look too far, particularly with the German companies, German suppliers, UV suppliers tend to be looking after the German OEMs. In, in our area, and especially in, in the Baldwin UV AMS side, we have for many, many years been very, very closely associated with Komori. To the point that every piece of equipment that we actually UV systems we have are actually designed for Komori presses, specifically for them presses, and we've actually got involved in developing the UV systems while the presses are actually in development. So our systems are des designed purely for Komori, they're deeply integrated, they're in the control console, and the fact that they're completely in the control means that they're safer as well. So you have something that's factory approved, you have something that we know exactly what we're doing, because we've done it hundreds and hundreds of times. If there is an issue that that has come up, we've overcome it. And if anybody else comes into this area, they're going to have to deal with all these issues that we've dealt with mm. 10, 15 years ago. But, uh, I mean, that, that sounds very uh, assuring to me. Uh, so, but does, but does, does that mean that if you have any other machine, you should not talk to you guys? Uh, not necessarily, okay. but um, if you have other machines, what we do is we have different, particularly in our LED systems, we've got different optics for ah. different applications. Okay, so that basically means that you can configure uh, the lamps to fit different types exactly. of machinery, right? Okay, okay. So it's a little bit like, I like to use an analogy of glasses, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't have it, one set of glasses or one lens that fits, for, works perfectly for everybody. So what we do is, we have the same glasses, but we will change the lens yeah. to match whatever that's the printer's a, needs that's are. That's actually quite good uh, comparison, right? And yes, and that's one of the reasons why we have so much success mm. because of the um, more and more machines seems to, I mean, more and more uh, printers seems to appreciate and actually uh, the acceptance of UV as a drying because, I mean, the inks are maybe getting a little bit cheaper uh, and more accessible from more vendors, They're putting a little bit more pressure on the market. Uh, uh, the lamps, I don't know how the price development is with the lamps, but it seems that more and more are using lamps for, for curing instead of gas for the web offset machines and for uh, IR and, and other means on, on conventional machines, is the sky the limit? Well, I think one of the things that's really driving it now is environmental concerns, particularly with energy and particularly with the cost of energy. And this is one of the areas where LED absolutely excels. If I have a, a traditional 40-inch press with an IR hot air dryer on it, which works extremely well, it'll consume maybe 80 kilowatts. I can have a 10 kilowatt LED system that allows you to print it at exactly the same speed with all the extra benefits that you get with having an LED system. Fantastic, and that basically means that people that have conventional machines should consider uh, just for the environmental, but also for the energy cost, yes. basically. So do, when you advise people to have like 
ROI models where you can say, okay, one kilowatt costs so much, and here is the cost of this, and now you can see how much you save? Or? Yes, we have that, and we also include things to do with maintenance and stuff, because an LED system is maintenance-free, a conventional system or an IO hardware system isn't. And when we run it in front of a customer, and we'll ask them how many hours a day they print, how many days of the week, how many weeks of the year, or whatever, they are shocked and stunned sometimes to see the huge savings that they can have. And we also put in a nice little bit at the end to show how much CO2 they've actually saved as well, which is also appealing more and more to people. And, uh, and uh, when you do that kind of uh, calculation, does that also take uh, the ink cost into consideration? Or um... Well, if you're going, c comparing conventional UV with LED, there's almost no difference in the inks. Um, we do also compare it with con like a water-based or solvent-based inks. We build that in as well. And you'll be surprised, it appears to cost more, but you get more mileage out of UV inks or LED inks. And you also get up to color quicker, you have less wasted sheets and stuff. So you can clear, in some cases, it's actually cheaper to use a UV ink than to use a traditional ink. But that message is that, I don't think that a lot of people know that, right? Well, I'm going to try and make people more and more aware of it, yeah, yeah. because it was something that I, as my mistake, I just assumed people knew about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But we, we have found that that is not necessarily the case, yeah, yeah. and now we're actually making that part of our ROI model as well. Nice. Um, last question, uh, because I mean, when we talk about these things, right, I can't help think about that if, uh, if you look at a market that has matured over the, let's say, past 10 years, or eight, 10 years at least, right? Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that, that when you look at UV and adoption, I was just thinking, what is the main constraint that you see with the printing companies? I mean, if you get the time with them, you can, you can prove that it is probably worthwhile their business, right? But still, you're not like 100% covering the market, right? So what are the constraints? Well, well we, initially we had the early adopters, yeah. okay, and who, who will try anything. Good we have them, right? Right, and, <laughs> and good thing we have them. So we had a yeah. huge surge. Yeah. And now we have a situation where new machines has got the technology on it. The field of, of people who have machines, existing ones, is, has dwindled a bit because yeah. the early adopters, they, they yeah. took it up. Yeah. But on new machines, it's, it's, it's standard now, almost totally normal. But as regards retrofits, that has definitely gone down. Yeah. And um, yes, we do find some, but nothing compared to what it used to be. Okay, so what you say is basically that most people have realized how important and how it's good for the environment, it's good for the business, it's good for the energy, it's good for basically everything, right? Exactly, exactly. And none of them will go back. Like, it's amazing. I sometimes go into a print shop and they might have converted two presses and there's still two more to convert. And the print manager has got trouble to try and get the guys who run the UV presses to go back onto the conventional ones. Because they, they can run at full speed without ever considering set off or any of these other issues that was a huge concern before. And what actually has happened in a lot of cases is that we go in and we do the ROI and we talk to somebody, you printed 10,000, yeah, I printed 10,000 and do it. But because the printer is so much more comfortable with a totally cured sheet when it arrives in, they're printing at full speed because they've got no concerns. And this is something that we don't, didn't originally factor into the ROIs, which actually is a dramatic help as well on the And ROI. just because of a lamp. Just because of a lamp. That's just it. because of a good lamp. Because of a good lamp. Thank you, Beth. Thank you very much.